Houston, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready. NASA HQ, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Bill Nelson and Pam Melroy. How do you hear me? Hey, Bill. Hi, Pam. Expedition 72 has got you loud and clear from the ISS. Welcome aboard. Well, Happy New Year. What are you guys uh, looking forward to up there in the new year? Well, there, there's a lot to look forward to, and I think we could each uh, add to the list. But uh, the nearest thing that we're looking forward to is doing a couple spacewalks over the next couple weeks. And uh, it's going to—it's a single thing to focus on, and we all come together as a team and pull off uh, something that's really hard to do. And that's with the team down on the ground, because there's uh, hundreds of people down there that are making all of it happen. Well, Pam's here with me. Uh, she wants to greet you as well. What a joy it is to see you guys, Butch, Sonny, Don, and Nick, all back in one of the most fabulous places in the entire universe, our gorgeous International Space Station. So, Happy New Year, and I'm excited about your spacewalk, too. That's uh, you and Sonny, right? Is that right, Nick? Yeah, that's the first one, um, and hopefully all goes well with uh, some radiator refills. Uh, that's sort of going to dictate our future. And if that all goes well, the team has a lot to do on the ground there. Uh, then Nick and I will do the first one uh, next week, and then uh, Butch and I will do the one on the following week. Hey, guys, are you going to be uh, pulling any uh, other special videos such as you did for the Olympics, where you all had your own Olympics on, on the International Station? Yeah, well, uh, doing a spacewalk, if you look at the training that everybody goes through, it's almost like it's an Olympic level event, only it's in space. You know, but we, we try to find ways to have fun, and I think I wasn't here when they made that first video. Um, but I'd look forward to doing something like that. Uh, just before we got on here, we were all practicing doing a group forward flip, uh, trying to perfect it. Uh, maybe we yeah. should show that off. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so we've got some work to go. Uh, we'll practice some more, and uh, when we're ready, we'll make sure we record it. Yeah, it was really beautiful, but you you are going to have to practice a little to stick the landing, it looks like. That's right. You need your feet together when you come down in the landing to get a perfect score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we agree, and we're going to work and work hard. Good. Hey, Don, it's really great to see you in space again. How's your photography going? Uh, uh, photography's going well. We have a new generation of cameras on station, Pam, and it's really amazing what these cameras can record. And we've got some special lenses, uh, particularly for optimized for nighttime imagery. And, and I really appreciate the the folks at at uh, JSC and the folks at Huntsville that make sure we have all this equipment on orbit uh, that allows us to collect the imagery that is so publicly available and tells the story of what it's like to be in space. Hey, Butch and Sonny. And I'm just going to say, uh, you know, these guys are being being. I'm just going to add one thing. These guys are being really humble. You know, Don has made has taken some incredible photographs. Butch has done some incredible time lapses, and and as well as you know uh, Matt Dominic beforehand. And those things are go viral. I think you guys know that too. But all my friends and family are just loving the work that these guys have done. It is just just awesome. 
Yeah, I've seen some of those. You're absolutely right. They're amazing. Uh, I want to uh, ask Butch and Sonny if, if you will put to rest what uh, reporters still keep asking me about how you're stranded, uh, that they're concerned that you don't have any clothes, that you don't have any food. Would you put to rest for the final time, and I hope you never have to answer it again, just uh, how you all are doing? Yeah, I think when we first launched, I think it was well known that we came up here. We swapped out a couple of components we needed on Space Station for some of our clothes. So we wore some clothes for a, a while, but that doesn't bother us because, you know, clothes fit loosely up here. It's not like uh, on Earth where you sweat and it gets bad. I mean, they fit loosely, so you can wear things, honestly, for weeks at a time and it doesn't bother you at all. So we never had any issue with wearing clothes for an extended amount of time. Now we have plenty of clothes. Uh, we are well fed. I've never seen anyone ever, ever eat as much as Don Pettit can eat. It is amazing to watch this man eat as skinny as he is. So that's just been enjoy a joy within itself. Every meal time. Actually, I get up at morning. I get up early. Don gets up early. We get up like four and uh, he's already in there eating before I even get up. I mean, it's just amazing. Amazing. So what you're telling us is you're not channeling Castaway and you don't have a volleyball with a handprint on it that you call Wilson. No, we've, we've got a whole team up here, so we, we're not worried about that. And there's a lot to do as, as well with the team on the ground. You know, we have, you know, tons of, we had tons of science experiments with SpaceX 31. We got spacewalks coming up. It was really busy when we were, uh, you know, waiting for Nick to get up here. And uh, it's, it's just been a joy to be working up here, particularly with our, our counterparts on the other end of the space station. It's just, a, it's just a, a great team. And no, it doesn't feel like we're a castaway. Um, yeah, eventually we want to go home because uh, you know, we left our families a little while ago, but, uh, but we have a lot to do while we're up here. We've got to get all that stuff done before we go home. Hey, Nick, um, it took you a couple of times on Soyuz to get to the station. Now you're back on the station. Uh, what's it like? Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I may not be the quickest study, but I eventually get it right. And uh, and uh, it, coming coming through the hatch this time uh, was was like I was I it was like I hadn't left. You know, I, I spent a little over 200 days the first time up here, and and coming back through it was like it was day 201. Uh, the body just is so miraculous in how it adapts and it has a memory and it just kind of snaps back. And so within a couple days. Uh, it felt like it was just uh, business as usual. Life on the station really hasn't changed much. The feel of life on station hasn't changed. A lot of the experiments have changed, and and that's been impressive to see this time around because the the science continues to get more and more complex, and more and more consequential. And the things that we're trying to answer are are more and more important for all of humanity, uh, and that's fun to see that evolution. So, Nick, what's your favorite experiment? Maybe that's for the whole crew. Um, the the experiment that I've spent a, a lot of time on, uh, a little over 60 days, uh, I've been growing algae. And, and, and it's been fun because the... Uh, for a couple reasons. One, it, it's really important. We're trying to figure out how do we create life support systems that are sustainable beyond Earth orbit, that we don't have to continually resupply because they're not closed loop systems. And so algae is a, a potential source for that so that they can consume our carbon dioxide and produce oxygen for us. And oh, by the way, if we produce a little bit more, we can also con consume it as food. And so it's a really neat idea that's been, there's a lot of research going into it. But it's also been fun because as part of this experiment, every couple of weeks I get into new equipment and there's notes from the research team in there. Uh, they didn't know who was going to be working on it, but they passed up notes. And, and, and those have been so special to kind of unopen as I go along. And it makes you feel connected to just the, the teams of people on the ground that have been doing this research for years and years. 
and and you get to be part of that even if it's only for a couple weeks up here it's really special uh, from the early days uh, of the space shuttle program we were working on experiments like uh, the protein crystal growth is any of that uh, going on how about other medical experiments that might be going on uh, there have been protein crystal growth experiments that Jacks have been doing right behind us in these uh, uh, containers that are called frosty, and they can also be used as an incubator at elevated temperatures, and that's what they've been doing with the protein crystal growth. Uh, Jacks also has another uh, uh, apparatus just. Uh, uh, about three racks in front of us on the uh, aft side that is also used for protein crystal growth. So it is still a viable topic. People are still working on it all these years uh, since uh, you flew on the shuttle and we're working on it then. Well, that's fantastic. In fact, I think, haven't we learned that some of the protein crystal growth experiments uh, have resulted in um, medical treatments here on Earth, which is just amazing to think about the basic research that you do that is going on to benefit life on Earth. Yeah, and Pam, to be honest, I've lost track of of the 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 extension of the protein crystal growth experiments to uh, application in uh, in human testing. I I have 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 not uh, been up with it because you know uh, the past two years I've been studying these things called Emer procedures with <laughs> with a fire and depress and and we actually had a, a a fire warning go off this morning got everybody <laughs> out of the sack uh, and it, it was a, a false indication. But we we jumped into the procedures just like we've been trained. Uh, we uh, we fire up our our analyzers to make sure there aren't any combustion products, and we just uh, we just charged off. Uh, speaking of, of fires, uh, there is a raging fire that is starting to really uh, seriously damaged Southern California. Have you all been able to see that out the window of the space station? Um, our orbit has not cooperated yet. Uh, uh, we've been able to observe the fires in the Congo region, their, their annual slash and burn that they do for taking care of their agriculture. And they're visible both during the day and at night. You can see the, the flame fronts at nighttime. And as soon as we get either day pass or night pass over Southern California, we're going to be using uh, the photo equipment that I talked about earlier to uh, record that and, and share it with everybody on Earth. Earth. We really appreciate that, Don. I think uh, being able to see wildfires from space is just one way that NASA, both from the space station but also from our other Earth observing satellites, is trying to help in this terrible wildfire situation. So just keep everybody there in your thoughts and prayers. And uh, we're kind of worried about the Jet Propulsion Lab and our staff there. So um, I know that they would appreciate your thoughts. And, and speaking of the Jet Propulsion Lab, uh, we just uh, have done an extensive uh, 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 amount of testing and decision making and just announced that uh, we have a viable plan for return of the samples from Mars. So everything that you all are doing on the station is going to get us ready to go to the moon and then eventually to Mars. And in the meantime, we've got a viable plan. We're bringing back 30 titanium tube filled cores from the surface of Mars. Uh, is there any thought about bringing them to space station first before we bring them to Mother Earth and do the initial stage of analysis on space station? Our preference is that we are going 
uh, direct back to Earth. And it would be a landing uh, like the Bennu asteroid sample. Uh, it would land with parachutes in the Utah de desert. That's the preferred uh, return on the European uh, return vehicle. Yeah, and I think it's going to take a little while, Don. So, uh, but uh, Bill is absolutely right that uh, what you are doing right now is helping us get uh, not just to the moon, but on to Mars. If I squint just a little bit, I could imagine that you're on a Mars transport vehicle and microgravity on the way as the first crew to land on Mars. So uh, I, I, it's nice to see you there. It's a special and amazing place, but what you're doing is actually pushing humanity out into the solar system. So thank you for that. And Pam, uh, we're ready to go on that mission. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, we just want you to know how much we appreciate what you do, that you represent not only uh, um, America, you represent all of humanity. Uh, if ever there has been an example of international cooperation, uh, you all are setting the gold standard because of how you get along with everybody on the International Space Station. Uh, you are in fact a model of what we can do as earthlings if we put our minds to it. So thank you, God bless you, and Happy New Year. Well, thank you very much, Bill and Pam. Thanks so much for taking the time. You know, we're, we're just part of a big team that's getting this all done. So honored to be part of it, honored to be living here on the International Space Station. And uh, when we get home, we'll have lots of stories to tell and we'll see you all there. Can't wait to see you. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications.